Since 1987, HIM Spanish Ministries has been a vibrant part of Hope International Missions. Dr. Glenn Reif pioneered the work among migrant Hispanics in South Florida using modified 18-wheel tractor trailers as mobile chapels. From this unconventional beginning, God quickly expanded the ministry. Congregations began springing up in the U.S. and before long, churches were planted in Central America. In 2009, John Dykes began serving in an administrative role within the Spanish ministries. Since 2013, he has been the director of HIM Spanish Ministries and under his leadership, growth has continued. We are grateful for his dedication throughout these years. Due to the size and complexity of HIM Spanish Ministries, we realized it was no longer feasible for one man to lead both the U.S. and foreign works. Beginning in 2019, the overseas component of Spanish Ministries became HIM Latin America. Eric and Hannah Coons assumed leadership of this region we anticipate expansion throughout Central and South America. John Dykes continues serving in a vital capacity as project manager for the many ongoing building projects. Sydney Grant, who previously led Spanish Ministries, has returned as the director of HIM US Spanish Ministries. We believe God will work through these strategic changes to multiply the gospel impact among Hispanics. God is truly blessing. HIM Spanish Ministries, and I'm excited to see how he will continue expanding the impact of this important work. In the years following the mobile chapel, God has blessed HIM Spanish Ministries in a powerful way. The services that took place in the semi-trailers were just the spark that lit a fire which has spread throughout Florida, up the eastern coast of the United States and into the Midwest, and this growth shows no sign of stopping. That spark created a New Testament momentum wherein the Spanish ministry began to expand from city to city and state to state as a result of people moving from one location to another. In addition to the growth in the U.S., many Hispanics, after giving their hearts to Christ, moved back to their home country and began churches there. This was how our Latin American works began. While the mobile chapels proved to be very effective as an evangelism tool, once a nucleus of believers were formed and regular church services were being held, having permanent facilities became an obvious necessity. We began to rent the facilities of English churches to hold our services on Sundays. This was the case in our first church planted in West Palm Beach, Florida. Other churches soon followed, such as Indian Town, Lake Worth, and Hope Sound. The expansion continued in other cities in the state of Florida. And in 1997, God called Rigoberto and Ana Vasquez to the city of Fort Myers to plant a church in cooperation with the Fort Myers Rescue Mission. Symbolic of the way that God has blessed the U.S. Spanish ministries, that church grew to the extent that they had to build a new church building. I'm standing today in front of the beautiful sanctuary which God provided. It's amazing to me to think back over more than 30 years since the mobile chapel began and to see how Rich Legon has blessed that vision. In the case of this particular church, it grew from zero to over 250 regular church attendees with a strong emphasis on outreach. Dios le bendiga, hermanos. Mi nombre es Rigoberto Vázquez. Soy el pastor de la Iglesia Evangélica de Santidad Fuente de Vida de aquí de la ciudad de Fort Myers. Hace 22 años que empezamos una obra aquí en Fort Myers y Dios nos ha ayudado, nos ha bendecido grandemente. Hemos logrado muchas cosas. Compramos un terreno y con la ayuda de Dios pudimos construir este templo con el propósito para que las almas sean salvas, para que el reino de nuestro Señor Jesucristo continúe 
aquí en este mundo. Recientemente empezamos una nueva obra en una ciudad cerca de Tampa que se llama Sun City. Tenemos planes por delante. Hay muchas ciudades donde se necesita el Evangelio. Queremos alcanzar las almas, incluso personas de otros países, como por ejemplo uh, personas del Medio Oriente, musulmanes, que necesitan la salvación, necesitan de Cristo. Y vamos a orar que Dios nos ayude para poder alcanzar a esas almas perdidas. Con la ayuda del Señor, seguiremos hacia adelante, trabajando siempre para el reino de nuestro Señor Jesucristo. Que el Señor le bendiga y sigamos adelante hasta que Cristo venga. Fort Myers is just one example out of many. There are currently 17 established HIM Spanish churches and two growing church plants. I've been asked before, how did this happen? What is the secret of the growth in the U.S. Spanish ministries? I believe I can confidently say that the cause of all this is discipleship. As much as possible, every born-again believer in the churches go through an intentional discipleship process which culminates in baptism and includes an understanding of what it means to be a functioning member in the body of Christ and preparation to serve God in a specific ministry calling. We give workshops throughout the year on subjects like evangelism, education, stewardship, and worship. Had it not been for this systematic discipleship, the U.S. Spanish ministries would probably be in existence, but we would have not expanded to the point of where we are today with thriving, healthy, self-sustaining, reproducing churches. A few years after the first churches were planted, a group of young men who had been saved and discipled in our West Palm Beach church shared with me that God was calling them into church ministry. Their question to me was, is there anything else left for us to study? Though they had completed their discipleship course, they wanted to be even better equipped to serve in the church. Through that question, God gave me a vision to launch an Evangelical Bible Training Institute, which was founded in February of 1990. The Spanish Bible Institute exists to prepare young men and women for church ministries, including pastoral work, church leadership, and children's ministry. All of the students walk away with a deeper biblical knowledge and a strong understanding of how the Great Commission applies to their own personal life. There are currently 81 students enrolled in the Bible Institute Extension here in the U.S., as well as in Central America. And God has blessed the Spanish Bible Institute with over 150 graduates. All of our Hispanic pastors have been trained in the Spanish Bible Institute, which has also contributed to the success and stability of the work. Over the next five to 10 years, I want to see the number of graduates increase to 200 men and women who are planting many more Hispanic churches in every region of the United States. Together, they will go out and create a lasting heritage of holiness among the Hispanics. In addition to the strong emphasis on discipleship and education, the U.S. Hispanic ministries have a strong administrative infrastructure that keeps the churches accountable and keeps the overall mission and vision alive. We recognize the church business must be run with excellence. Our district leadership and General Assembly help ensure this is taking place. Additionally, we have put into place various ministries for their ongoing edification and equipping of our pastors and church members. Each year, these include revivals, a pastor's retreat, youth retreats, women's retreat, and camp meetings. It is well known that Seabreeze Camp, a division of FEA Ministries, is held every February in Hope Sound, Florida. However, what many may not realize is that two camp meetings are held during that time. In 1998, former HIM President J.R. French cast the vision that the congregation in our growing Spanish churches 
would come together for a camp which would run concurrently with Seabreeze Camp and take place right here in this auditorium. Prior to this, district camp meetings were held. These continue to take place today. However, the February General Spanish Camp grew quickly and has become one of the largest Holiness camp meetings within the United States. At these camps, there is representation from all the churches in the United States and from many of the churches in Latin America. Individual and collective revival is the primary goal of the camps. In these camp meetings, we have been able to raise the resources to send missionaries overseas, build churches overseas, and pay off large projects such as Spanish Bible Institute construction. We look forward to seeing how God will continue using the Hispanic camp meetings to strengthen and grow the Spanish works in the United States and abroad. There are many marks of a healthy church. Our goal is for all the Hispanic churches to be self-sustaining with strong local leadership and reproducing themselves. For more than a decade, God used the leadership of John Dykes to expand Spanish ministries. In addition to many churches being planted here in America and overseas, his unique ability to manage building projects combined with strong vision to see congregation have permanent facility for worship brought stability to the infrastructure of Spanish ministries. When I came to the U.S. to work with Spanish ministries, my prior experience with ministry had all been on the foreign field. My wife and I had been working in Mexico when I was asked to transition to working out of Hope Sound with all of Spanish ministries, both foreign and domestic. It was a big change. To be honest, I was not quite prepared for the excitement and potential I found when I arrived and settled into the work. We were in the midst of an evangelism revival and the work was rapidly preparing for growth. I quickly saw my place in the ministry as a facilitator, one who could help others make things happen. Our pastors here in the States felt God's call on their lives. They were young, energetic, but to them, they were in a strange environment and needed help to see their vision go forward. This is where I fit in. It was clear that if we were going to see the works go forward, I needed to help our national pastors in legal areas, real estate needs, building projects, and of course, prayer and moral support. That has been my goal, my work, and hopefully accomplishment during my time as director of the ministry. A person who helped guide the work forward through the efforts of the national pastors. Some time back, I saw that I was burning the candle at both ends and I wasn't physically able to continue to do so. It was time for a change. My vision was that a new director could step in and I could continue with the construction side of the ministry. I saw a great need to work with the local pastors to make sure they had the proper facilities to help their works go forward. In February, we made this transition, and now I'm working as project coordinator for all our churches. To be honest, I don't know how I kept up when I was the director and doing the construction projects at the same time. I'm so glad for the change. I do want to mention that we have plenty of openings for volunteer construction workers, both here in the U.S. and overseas, if you would like to help on one of the projects. I was recently privileged to attend a portion of the Touching Lives for Christ short-term mission boot camp in Central Florida where young people prepare for their ministry assignments. It was exciting to see several teams preparing for summer ministry around the world. One group in particular caught my attention, a team of youth preparing to travel to Costa Rica to minister in child evangelism. This team was entirely recruited from HIM Spanish churches in Florida and Georgia. Their trips were largely funded by those churches as well. As I watched them prepare, it was as if Spanish ministries had come full circle. The young people's parents and grandparents had been saved as a result of various ministry initiatives here in South Florida, including the mobile chapel ministry of the 1980s and 90s. Now these young people were going to share the love of Christ abroad. It was also a privilege to recently visit the HIM Spanish Church in Dalton, Georgia. This church is growing and there were over 100 in attendance that Sunday morning. I noticed an older gentleman in the crowd who was not Hispanic. His name is Harold Watson. After the service we spoke and he shared how over a decade ago he saw many Hispanic men and women moving into the area to work in the carpet mills for which Dalton is well known. He clearly felt God leading him to reach these people with the gospel. 
He and his wife rented a small house and began a kids club, simply sharing the love of Jesus with these Hispanic children. Before long, the ministry grew, and he knew a church needed to be planted. Not being proficient in Spanish, he contacted HIM, and the Dalton, Georgia church was begun. That congregation continues to expand, and they recently purchased a vacant lot across the street to accommodate the increased need for parking. As I left Dalton, Georgia, my mind thought of the countless churches across America that have immigrant populations moving into their neighborhoods. Are there other Harold Watsons out there who are willing to reach them with the gospel? HIM is standing by, ready to assist. As we continue to move forward with U.S. Spanish ministries, I envision expansion continuing in two ways, through planning holiness churches and establishing training institute extension in new districts across America. We know this will further our vision of a vibrant heritage of holiness for the Hispanics in the U.S. But our vision doesn't stop there. I have a burning passion and desire to see our young men and women trained to become missionaries themselves with many Hispanic people from the U.S. relocating back to their country of birth to establish vibrant, reproducing holiness churches. And I believe it's going to happen. This has been the goal from the inception of Spanish ministries. Glenn Reif used to say, out of the pews and into the world. With God's help, we will continue this by expanding through church planting.